If you are new to Cakewalk, how do you go about recording vocals? We've already talked about the three different type of microphones that you can use, and that would be either a condenser mic or a dynamic mic or a ribbon mic. But now you've chosen the mic that you want to use. It could be a mic that's just laying around in your room. That's okay. If you're in Cakewalk, we want to create a new project first. So here I'm in Cakewalk. Here's a new project. I can start off with an empty project. This is what I'm going to start off for now because I want to show you this very simple. Now, before I record anything, I want to make sure that my interface is set up. If you are using an interface, then you need to make sure it's set up correctly. And if you're not using the interface, well, you need to use the interface. This is basically the bottom line. Whether you have a USB microphone or whether you're using a Focusrite Scarlett or whether you're using the mixer that I have, the X18, either one of those you're going to need them set up properly you want to go to edit go to preferences after you get in preferences look at audio devices now over here you should see input drivers and you should see output drivers if you do not see the input drivers for your device here or the output drivers then that means that either of these might be the problem okay looking at playback and recording if i have my driver mode set to asio then i know my device should show up but if I don't have it on ASIO, it's not going to show up correctly at all. And that might be your problem right there. So if you're using an audio interface, most modern interfaces today are all going to use some type of ASIO or they may use Wasapi, whichever one may work better for you. But for me, ASIO is going to be the best way to go because it's going to give you the best latency. Latency, let's go to driver settings. Driver settings is up here. Playback. We need to make sure it's set to whatever my device is. And my, in this case, it's the XR. So and in the recording, it's the XR. So that works out right. My sampling rate is 4,800. Now you can do 44. You can go lower than that, but I advise either 44 or 48. If you're dealing with like HD quality and you're trying to make a movie or something like that, it might be 96. Whatever your device will support, make sure you have it set to that. Mine, 48 is where I want to be. So I keep it on 48,000. This is the mixing latency, all right? This is what I was talking about earlier. The latency is basically how long it takes from signal to come from your computer to your ears. So when I'm speaking into my microphone, acoustically, everything sounds great. But by the time it gets to the computer, it's going to be delayed. And then by the time I hear it back in my headphones, it's delayed even more. So you can adjust this quicker faster or you can make it more safe if you do it faster it's going to allow it to sound close to the way it sounds acoustically when you're singing or saying something if you do it safer then there's going to be a delay like if i say hello hello hi hi okay that's how it's going to sound if you've always wondered why there's some delay from what you record and what you hear when you listen to your project then this may be the reason why now i have my fast set pretty much good you know it's really good it's like now if i want it to be more safer understand that the quicker you go the more memory resources is going to use and the safer you go the less memory resources will use and this might be one reason why you might have dropouts so if i'm dealing with recording i like to keep it fast if i'm dealing with processing and i want to put a whole bunch of effects and stuff on there and start playing with effects I'm going to put that as close to safe as possible because I don't need to worry about the latency when I'm playing back. It's only when I'm recording that I'm worried about the latency. All right. So I'm going to keep that back there fast. ASIO panel. If I need to adjust my ASIO panel, here's my X18 here. I can go here and adjust the buffer size. My buffer size is set at 256 samples. I'm not going to mess with this number right now. I kind of keep it there some way. If you have to adjust it or if you have to move it back, you know, you can go and play with that depending on what your device is. Everything else looks fine. I'm not really worried about it. Once you get done adjusting it the way you want it, press apply. And then you're good to go on that end. So we have the playback recording set the right way. We have the driver settings set. And then we have the devices. Now the devices should be here. And once again, you should see the inputs and you should see the outputs. If you see the inputs and outputs, make sure that they're checked and then press apply again. And now your audio should be set up. If you're working in Cakewalk and you notice that when you go to another program like YouTube or anything like that, for some reason, it's not playing the audio anymore. 
It may be because this is checked. Suspend audio engine when Cakewalk is not in focus. So make sure that's unchecked. That basically means that Cakewalk is the center of attention. So when it's not the center of attention, audio should not play at all. You want to uncheck this. So make sure you uncheck that suspend audio and that should fix that problem.